Hello again, CGC family. A few of you guys that tune into the channel and watch. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say this before we get into the video. Um, if you guys uh, wouldn't mind, you know, uh, share the video. Maybe tag some people in it. See how they feel about what I'm about to say. You've seen the, uh, the title of this video. And uh, at this point, I haven't obviously uh, put the title for the video in yet. I'm making the video. But, you know, obviously by the time this reaches post, you will have seen the title. Uh, and I am going to touch on this subject. Because I've seen a lot of YouTubers that I'm subscribed to touch on this subject. And while many of them seem to do it from comedic standpoints... Or standpoints of vitriol to some extent. I am going to, as I usually try to do, toe the line, so to speak, on this subject. I'm going to try and give you the truth or at least what the truth needs to be from my perspective okay and obviously if you've gotten this far thank you for watching uh the title of the video is representation matters and what does that mean right the biggest struggle we've seen with media be it movies tv video games comics even music over the last decade or so has been the idea of representation and quotas that have been enforced on Producers for TV shows, movies, video games, so on and so forth. The same things, you know, we just mentioned. I recently watched a video of one of my uh, subscriptions, one of my, my favorite content creators, actually. And he was speaking about the... I'm speaking of Fratanga, first and foremost. And he was speaking about the Insomniac leak. And how there was a big uh, portion of that leak that talked about, well, I don't know if it was big, it might have been small, but it was a portion of the leak uh, that talked about diversity training for the Insomniac staff. And, you know, you put one or two together, spoiler alert, skip ahead a few seconds, maybe 30, to 30 seconds to a minute. Apparently, the things that happened at the end of the newest Spider-Man game are more than likely a result of the influence that this training most likely had on the developers of that game. I'm not going to tell you what happened, but if you've beaten Spider-Man 2, if you spoiled the game for yourself by this point, or if you've seen Fratanko's video, you kind of know how that game ends. And yeah. Uh, I was hearing something about people not being really happy about that. Uh, I haven't played the game yet, so I can't really say how I feel. Uh, I need to see how it's executed. Uh, obviously, people who don't like that kind of stuff are off rip saying that it's executed poorly. But I always stress never take anybody's word for something. If you can experience it, if it won't kill you to experience it, if it won't harm you to experience it, experience for yourself before you make an opinion. That is the safest way to move through life. To hell with just video games. To move through life. Always formulate your own opinion. Always find out things the safest way you possibly can for yourself. So I won't speak on Spider-Man and how it ends. And the things that occurred that may have been a result of this training. But he did go over very carefully as to avoid... Uh, 
you know, any kind of penalty or lawsuit from Insomniac. He did very carefully go over that part of the Insomniac leak, which was rather huge, right? There was Wolverine footage, all kinds of stuff happened. And people have been raising these questions. The Iron Lords, uh, I'm pretty sure uh, uh, Kyle, I believe that's how you pronounce him. He, he went over, a lot of people went over this stuff. You saw the title of my video. Representation matters. There's sarcasm in that title. And there's honesty in that title. I want you to understand duality of both. Right? Representation does matter. It It's never a good idea that a country full of Asian, white, black, Native American, you know, uh, Latino, uh, all these different races, all these different cultures, all these different sexual preferences, gay, bi, trans, straight. It's never a good idea for anything or any product that we put out to not represent or be representations of all of us all encompassing right you can't make a show in new york and not have black people in it that's just weird right for all that for intense purposes you can't make a show in new york near chinatown and not have asian people in it not to say that all asian people in new york live in chinatown but it would be freaking ridiculous right uh, to do that so I, what I want you guys to understand is I'm not here to dismantle or tear down the idea of representation uh, or to that extent the idea that you know there should be Asian people in film black people in film white people in film latino people in film people of different faiths in films people of different sexual uh, orientations in films all of that stuff should be there however what you should not be doing and this is hollywood this is game studios this is music companies this is tv Whatever, which Hollywood kind of encompasses, right? So I didn't really need to go over that one again. What you should not be doing is forcing it, right? You shouldn't be shoehorning it. You shouldn't do stupid stuff like say, oh, yeah, well, if you're going to make this TV show, you got to have an Asian in it, or you got to have a black guy in it. You got to have this, you got to have that, and somebody has to be gay. Can you know how many times on TV shows in the last 10, 15 years I've seen Hollywood purposely say, well, shit, how can we kill two birds with one stone? Make the black guy gay. Make the Asian guy gay. See, the problem Hollywood has problem that the games industry has and perhaps maybe even the problem that the music industry has to an extent is that the people who are actually pulling the strings are all from one set they're all from one breed they're all from one culture and when that's the case you can force or demand on them or they even can demand and force on themselves the idea that oh yeah you know uh we're making this in america or we're making this here and making this there we need to represent everybody what you're going to get is this ridiculous i don't know if this is the proper use of the word but homogenized bullshit version of what that person or what these people or what that group is supposed to be we don't need to force a bunch of white liberal or conservative 
no, you know, no discrimination here. Men and or women to make a black kid be the new Superman or something. We don't need that shit, right? There's no black guy. Let me let me say this as loud and as clear as I can. There's no black person or gay person or Latino person or Asian person that's hearing about a game or hearing about a movie or hearing about a TV show that's saying, I ain't fucking with that shit unless somebody that looks like me is in it. That has never fucking happened. And the and let's not even okay, fine. Let's not even say never. The few times it does happen, you're talking about a very, very minute percentage of people who are gonna protest and bitch and whine about something like that to the point where it'll keep them from engaging in that media. I would never miss a new John Wick movie. Because John Wick is still white. That is fucking stupid. I fuck with John Wick movies because they're awesome. They're good movies. No one has to be gay. No one has to be black. No one has to be Asian. No one has to be anything. The movie just needs to be good. That's all I want. That's all anybody really wants. Now... Admittedly, myself, uh, I'm going to bring up the Marvel movies here. The Marvel movies have kind of fallen into a. Uh, the Marvel product, honestly, has kind of fallen into a bit of disarray where if they're not having a difficult time producing scripts and actually finishing products, like that Blade movie, um, they're putting out products that people largely disdain. I mean,. I've seen some critics say, oh, like the new Echo TV show. Oh, yeah, it's great. But some of the public opinion of it is that it's garbage. And I haven't seen it yet. So, again, I don't like to criticize things that I haven't tried myself. I'll watch it, formulate my own opinion, probably do a review of the TV show. I did like Hawkeye. So, there's that. But... Marvel's product has gotten worse, and a lot of people will point to the quote-unquote pandering that is happening with that current set of, you know, uh, TV shows, movies, etc. from that universe. I don't know if I would exclusively point to that instead of also just saying, you know, maybe people are just tired of it. I mean... We got it for a solid decade, and they told the best story they possibly could with those characters. If one has to remember, Iron Man wasn't that popular until Robert Downey Jr. played Iron Man. Like, for all intents and purposes, most of that Avengers group is popularity-wise before, you know, about a decade or so ago, pretty mediocre. If you want to talk about the most popular Marvel characters, it's the X-Men. The X-Men, like Wolverine's popularity-wise, shits on every character in the Avengers pre-2010-ish, 8-ish, whenever the first Iron Man movie came out. And then after Wolverine, you're maybe talking <sighs> Magneto... You know what I'm saying? There's pro be before that time, there's probably about five or six X-Men characters in front of Captain America, Iron Man, Thor. And as crazy as that sounds, that is absolutely true. Right? In about 10 years of that, 10 years of building up lore and telling the story, maybe there's just a level of fatigue. Maybe you're tired of looking at it. Maybe the formula is just so samey that you just don't want to be bothered anymore i know that's kind of the reason i stopped watching it. it's like i'm starting to hate this shit let me fall back because i don't want to hate comic books i lived in the time where the comic book movies i got were so bad we're talking about punisher starring Dolph lundgren 
uh, Captain America. God, who, who's the guy that started that Captain America movie? It, shit was garbage anyway. It doesn't matter. But like a canceled Fantastic Four movie that should have never been filmed if you've ever seen footage of that shit. I, I never would have thought in a million years that somebody would be able to take these great characters and make these awesome films and TV shows and even games about them because as a person in his 40s, I have seen a lot of dog shit games, movies, and TV shows based on a lot of these characters. So the fact that Disney pulled that off and pulled that off for about a decade and some change, it's fucking awesome to me. But I was starting to hate it because it was like, they wouldn't stop. And with the first series, okay, it makes sense. But now I'm getting fatigued. Of it. I say all that to say this. Maybe that's really the issue and not the quote-unquote pandering to the, 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 the gay, trans, the, the LBGTQ plus community, uh, the black community, the Latino community. Maybe that's the issue or even the handicapped community because uh, Echo is deaf, I believe. But I think the biggest problem that a lot of these groups, if their intention is to actually get representation and not something else, I think the problem that a lot of these groups are starting or are failing, not starting, but they're failing to understand is that you can make a group of white, liberal or conservative writers create a story about a black gay superhero that lives in Pittsburgh or some shit, right? You can make them do that. It's going to suck for a myriad of reasons. This shit's going to be trash unless one of or several of the writers on that team are beyond brilliant. And the key reason is this. You are better off having a black gay person write that character the problem isn't what's happening on the screen right like i, I get sick of this idea and, and and this was in fratanga's video this 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 idea and as a black man i'm going to say this right i'm sick of this idea that you see in bullshit videos like that because i've seen a couple of myself working in the industry that i work in i've had to watch these sensitivity videos about different types of people and different sexual orientation and different races. It's bullshit. Right? It, it it is really gaslighting and bullshit. Right? Again, you will never hear a regular black, Asian, Latino, white, you will never hear a gay trans person on average be offered to go to a movie or play a game and say, well, is somebody like me in it? Because if they're not, I don't fucking want to play it. No one says that. There's a highly vocal minority who gets on the fucking soapbox and says that stupid shit. And then you hear this stupid shit in these training videos like, oh, well, you know, uh, Seeing a black character on the screen inspires my little brother or sister to want to be a hero. That is the stupidest shit I've ever heard in my life. First of all, and this is some black man shit, right? There are guys, black men, who will say like uh the movie the color purple was just remade right and it was it's not based on the original movie which is based on the book obviously it is based on the broadway play of the movie which is based on the book so there's a whole lot of uh things you, you know like that old story if you start a rumor on one end of a table by the time it gets to the other end it's completely different there are a lot of things like when, once you're doing when you're doing a translation of a translation it's going to be a lot of stuff cut out, even from the original movie. Obviously, a lot of stuff cut out from the books, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There is a there is a section of black men who are complaining about the fact that that movie came out. And I know a lot of black men who watch this video. If if any black men watch this video, are probably gonna come after me about this. 
they don't like that movie because of the light that it paints black men in. You know, most of the black men in the movie are weak. They are mean. They are possessive. They batter, beat women. They cheat on them, so on and so forth. Not every man in the movie is like that, but the central focused men in the movie are like that, right? These motherfuckers are doing a lot. Two things. The movie takes place in the early 1900s, and if you know about that generation, which was one or two, I think one generation removed from, from black men being freed, if you know about the shit that those black men's fathers went through, and how they were treated, and how they were made to go and sleep around, and how they saw their women getting treated by their slave masters, then you understand why those men are like that. That's number one. So they're not lying on the men of that time. That's how a lot of them were, unfortunately. And if you don't, if you want to fucking argue about it, go ask one of your oldest living relatives and see how real that shit is. May not have been in your family, but if they wasn't in your family, they knew somebody like that. Number two, and this is the most important part to the angry black men who gonna come after me, if you know a woman or are interacting with a woman who watches that movie and gets mad with you and you've never done anything that, of that sort to her, get the fuck away from her as soon as you can. Let me be the first to tell you, as a logical human being, I don't want to date, be around, or or interact with anybody who is influenced by fucking movies because this shit's not real. It's fake. It's goofy. If you know a motherfucker that sees Spider-Man and says, you know what, I'm going to get some silly string together and see if I can swing off a building. First of all, tell him you'll see him when you when you get there because that motherfucker's going to die, right? And two, stay as far away from this can because he's going to get himself killed and he's probably going to get you killed if you're standing next to him. He's a fucking idiot. Anybody who's easily influenced by movies. Now, don't get me wrong. I've been affected by movies, right? E.T., is one of my favorite movies of all time. And E.T. is one of my favorite movies of all time because Steven Spielberg, the director of E.T., and also coincidentally the director of The Color of Purple, the original version anyway, he produced it so on. Steven Spielberg made that movie, I believe, and you correct me if I'm wrong if you're a film person in the uh, chat, made that movie when his parents were getting a divorce. He made that movie when his parents were getting a divorce. And the the main character in that movie, I believe his name was Elliot. This is my favorite movie of all time, but I don't remember the character's names, right? But I believe Elliot was dealing with his parents being divorced. And he ends up finding this alien in his backyard and he befriends him. As a child who was going through the similar thing, my parents had just gotten divorced. That was my first VHS tape I ever owned, my first VHS, VCR I ever owned that I had in my room. That movie had a great effect on me because it literally matched the situation I was going through. It did not make me the man I am today. It has a special place in my heart because of what it did for me when, <coughs> excuse me, when I saw it. Based on the situation I was going through when I saw it. But I'm not, I didn't go in the fucking backyard looking for aliens to befriend and hide from the government. You see what I'm saying? And yeah, it, it, I, I'm, I'm really dumbing it down and simplifying the, the, the idea of heroes influence people. But let me say this. If you know anything about American history. And we touched on that a second ago when we were talking about the color purple. You know about slavery and the, the, the fallout from that and how black men were denigrated and black people in general denigrated, not just black men, black women, black children, you know, Emmett Till, so on and so forth. This was up until like the 60s, it was really up till now. Motherfuckers are still getting shot by cops, right? If you understand the history or if you've looked up the history of how black people were treated in the early 1900s, late 1800s, shortly after they were granted their freedom, those who were aware of it, whole nother subject. And then you go into something like World War One, 
What was significant about World War I? There were two significant things when it comes to black people in World War I. One, well, not just two, not just two but there are two significant things that, that stand out in my mind. One, there was a gentleman whose name escapes me at the moment. I believe his last name was Johnson. He was the, called the Black Death. I think his name was William Johnson. He was called the Black Death. This man was a soldier who held off an entire German platoon with just a knife and a broken gun because he apparently had put the wrong kind of ammo on the gun and it jammed, so he had to beat off a whole platoon or squadron or whatever the hell you want to call it, German soldier with just a knife. He saved himself and the wounded soldier that was next to him's life. He died poor and penniless. And then you hear about the Harlem Hellfighters. These are black men who went over to Europe during World War One and helped them and helped the Allies fight the Axis, the, the, the you know the Germans. These men were so denigrated by their own country, that being America at the time that the American military is said to have sent a letter to the French military who they were working under as uh, volunteers, I guess, saying, do not treat them like you treat your white soldiers because we don't want them coming back with any arrogance. When they, co when they come back to the States, we don't want them feeling like they're more important than they are. At no point, and I say all that to say this, at no fucking point, was there a movie or a TV show or even a fucking comic book that those men read that made them want to be fucking great? They did it because they wanted to do it. And I say all that to say this. If a bunch of motherfuckers need a TV show or a movie or a comic book or music or anything to want to be great, then they don't need to be fucking great in the first place. Because at the end of the day, greatness is not fucking given to you because you watched a TV show or you read a comic book greatness is something you either have or you do not what inspires greatness if anything does is real men somebody watched Michael Jordan and said I can do that you got LeBron James and Kobe somebody watched great men and great women and great gay men and great Asian men and great black men and great whatever kind of men and women and they decided you know what I can do that too they didn't need to see it on fucking TV they didn't need to see it in a fucking movie they especially didn't see need to see Hollywood's homogenized bullshit version of it because you know that's full of lies and garbage they need to see it in a fucking video game they learned from actual people that looked like them. That's how they got there. Right? And this is what all of these media companies don't understand. You're going to inspire people by hiring more black people to run this shit. By hiring more Latino people to run this shit. And that's where representation actually matters. Fuck what's on the screen. What's happening behind the scenes? The most beautiful fucking thing I saw this past year was the fact that the lead producer on the fucking Blade game is a black dude. Because of course it should be a black dude. Blade's a black character. The, the game is clearly going to have some kind of uh, hip-hop influence and it takes place in France. Who better? Who better to lead that game than the black Frenchman? Imagine that. You don't need Neil Druckmann and whoever fuck else. And I'm not trying to pin Sony, but he stands out as the main one everybody can't stand, right? I personally don't have anything against the guy, but apparently he's responsible for a lot of this shit. You, you ask the average person who hates this, this whole woke, as they call it, movement. <laughs> Neil Druckmann can't tell me shit about being black. Because regardless of how well he writes, regardless of whatever he makes, 
when he wakes up and gets ready in the morning, he is a white man. Now, I'm not saying that someone should just hire black guys and let them write the stories and fuck Neil Druckmann and fuck anybody. But no, because it's the same stupid shit as that they're doing in the games and the movies and the TV shows, whatever. We need to figure out, and by we, I mean black culture or Latino culture if you're Latino or gay culture if you're gay, why people from our circles are not joining these industries. Is it an opportunity thing, something like that? I know personally, as someone with a computer science degree, I have gone out of my way to try and teach black children at the place I work how to code, how to program. I coach a robotics team. This is how you get that stuff going. Not by shoehorning it. Not by making white people who don't want to tell those stories tell those stories. I have never been a fan of begging somebody else to talk about me you understand what i'm saying that's fucking stupid i don't need you to talk about me i need somebody that looks like me to talk about me hell maybe i need to talk about me i don't need you to do it you make what you want to make if i fuck with it i'll fuck with it but i don't have to see me in what you make if you want to put somebody that looks like me in there fine i don't care but i'm not going to demand that you do it I'll end it on this. And I know this wasn't a video game video. I'll, I'll more than likely have some video game footage rolling. But I, I really want to have this talk because we're getting... The, the world's crazy right now, right? We might be on the brink of something really big. I don't want to say it because I don't want to get flagged by YouTube for it. But if you've been paying attention to the global events, you know we might be headed towards something bad, right? Let's just say that. The weather's fucking crazy. I'm on the East Coast, so I'm in the middle of a fucking snowstorm right now. We got a lot of crazy shit going on. But the last thing anybody needs is for someone else to tell their story. If you are from one of these minority groups like myself, and you feel so desperately that you need to see yourself in something, then why don't you get off your ass and do something about it. Not complain. Not beg. Not demand that somebody else who is not you. Who doesn't look like you. Who doesn't know your struggle. Who doesn't know your fucking story. To tell your story. So many people can get access to game editors. So many people can get access to stories. Hell, you can use AI if you're clever. And I know that's like a dirty word amongst creatives, right? You can even use AI to help you create something and put it out there let it exist but for god's sakes people of all of all walks of life all sexual orientations all races all religions stop expecting other people to do the work for you and i know that's not the majority of it i know it's a small minority but they gotta get this message right you gotta stop expecting somebody else to do what you want them to do. Do it yourself. It's made it's easier and easier every year. I know plenty of people from all walks of life who are making their own TV shows, making their own films. The shit may not be good, but at least they're trying. We gotta get back to that. The Harlem Hill Fighters didn't need inspiration. They did it because they were fucking men. There was a a, 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 a a black lady. God, I, 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 I hate when I don't have these names. I, I don't take notes. Wait a second, I need to improve on. There was a black lady during the 40s and 50s who rode around the country on a fucking motorcycle by herself. Maybe she was inspired by Amelia Earhart. I don't fucking know. But it, 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 if you know anything about America, especially the southern part of it during the 40s and 50s, it wasn't a safe thing for her to be doing. She did it. And you can look a little Googler. Uh, when her birthday comes around every year, I'm pretty sure Google puts one of those cartoon caricatures of, of her up. Not because I think they're pandering. I think because she's an important figure in American history. Because she did something more than that. But that's one thing she did. Right? Look at real people for inspiration. Don't demand that a movie does it because they're only going to half ass it. They're not going to do it right. They're not, they're not, they're just not going to do it right. 
Nine times out of ten, I'm not going to do it right. And it's going to annoy people. And you're going to draw vitriol. You don't even need to draw. But we got to stop this shit, man. This, this is one of the many things we need to course correct. We got to get this. We got to end this shit. Forcing anybody to tell your story is fucking crazy. You tell your story. That's the only way the truth is going to come out about it. Otherwise, I'm going to get what we got now, which is a bunch of angry people and not very good products, right? So, I'm off my soapbox about it. I know this is a pretty long video, but I, I thought I would get that out here, guys. I know this isn't traditional gaming thing. You might want to get used to that. I'm going to talk about more than just games and gaming. I think that uh, gaming is such a big and popular uh, subject matter now that it's starting to bleed into other things. I, I don't want to get too political. You know, I don't want to, not necessarily, I don't want to say bore, but I don't want to draw people off with that or scare anybody off. I know politics can be a touchy subject, but. Yeah, man, we, we, we got to fix the way this stuff is going because forcing people to tell stories they don't want to tell never ends well, right? We And we need to all figure out as different cultures why people that look like us aren't doing this for us. Why are we depending on somebody else to do it? Because that's the real problem, not that... There needs to be an extra black guy in this movie or Superman needs to be black this time. That ain't, that's not it. But at any rate, let me know what you think. Like, comment, subscribe, share the video. Uh, I don't make money off this. So I, again, I don't really care if you do any of those things, but I, I really do want to have this conversation. I'm willing to listen. I'm not going to call anybody stupid for their opinion or anything, but man, we need to get to the bottom of this shit because it is it, it this way ain't working it's just not At any rate uh god bless you know uh, be well and i will talk to you soon